Hello my soccer universe. Well, we have a final and given that the final is played in the Miami area, Miami Gardens officially, we have actually a dream final. We have Argentina with Messi, who now plays of course in Miami against Colombia, who you might not know, but there's a huge Colombian diaspora in Miami as well. So I expect kind of a hot final too. So this will be definitely an interesting one. And yes, you see a yellow Colombia shirt back there. However, I have to admit, this is a fake. I got faked again. However, I'm working on replacing that one already and this will be a video that you will see soon on my channel. Let's hope the resolution will work out. But we also saw with the scenes following the second semifinal in Charlotte that, yeah, organization and chaos always surround South America. But here, and I will talk about it a little bit later, it's definitely also a misunderstanding within the United States of what South American fans actually are and can be. Although I think a huge blame needs to be put also on Commerball as a federation. You know, they went for the almighty dollar and were rewarded with chaotic scenes. But speaking purely on the sporting side of things, Colombia definitely have been the best side of this Copa America, at least the best side to watch. But overall, given their record now with over 20, nearing 30 games being unbeaten, and beating big teams in the process, they fully deserve to be in the final. They might at the moment be the best team in South America. However, we also have to see that when they face the actual world champions in Argentina, a team that has not been very convincing, uh, in the final they are. And yes, we can talk about soft schedule, blah, blah, blah. They are in the final and they can defend their crown. And that would put them in an area of vicinity of the Spain team from 2008 to 2012, where they win Euro, World Cup, Euro, Copa America, World Cup, Copa America is in there. Although that Spain team was something really special. This Argentina team is special in the sense that, you know, they finally do it for Messi as a team and that there are other players that actually can support him too. And Messi didn't look all that bad. And while it is not totally related to the Copa America, so slightly it is, I also want to mention it. We have the big news that coach Berhalter was sacked by the United States. After their showing, it does not really come as a surprise. Let's see who they will appoint as the new coach. There are, of course, big names swirling around Jurgen Klopp. I don't think you get any one of these. I think what you need is a manager that can make some team spirit, that has a defined style of play that fits the players. But yeah, I'm an outsider here. And let's go to New York for this first semifinal, or I should say East Rutherford in New Jersey. Long story, we don't need to get into it. Ahead of this semifinal, we all thought that, you know, Argentina looked really bad against Ecuador. If Canada can play their nasty, high-pressing Jesse Marsh, Red Bull style soccer, they could give Argentina trouble if Argentina don't show up. And especially if Messi is again a passenger that is just walking around, strolling around and not doing much else. Well, this time around, Messi looked actually fit. And that changed the whole complexion of the game. Because now without needing to be convincing, Argentina were just a better team and it was always a matter of time until they took the lead. Canada a little bit overcome by the occasion as well. You know, the big stadium, the big occasion. It seemed a little bit too much for them. As soon as Rodrigo de Paul assists Julian Alvarez for the opener, there was only one win and that happened already in the 22nd minute. And then Argentina were in cruise mode. And right after the half, Enzo Fernandez takes a shot. Messi deflects it. He's not offside. It's tunnel Argentina game done and then it got even worse for Canada because there was an injury to the star Davies he had to come off didn't look good as well yeah pitchers were also a big worry at this Copa America in the end Argentina deserve it easy winners they move on to the final and maybe they for once can dazzle I mean they really didn't have to extend themselves all that much except against Ecuador who is a very underrated side within South America well, it was always clear that the second semi-final, and also given the draw, the second semi-final was always going to be the highlight match. Uruguay against Colombia. You didn't have Brazil there, but you had Uruguay against Colombia. Two teams that are really intense and two teams that are really bound to shake up the natural order of common ball, you know, Brazil, Argentina, then the rest. They already have disposed of Brazil, if you would like. At the moment, Brazil is soul searching for now. The game, super intense and up and down, open affair. Not necessarily a great game, but super intense. And this is also what you get from South America. There are tackles and fouls in there. There's a viciousness in there that, for instance, you don't see at the Euros. 
which makes the Copper Verga also a little bit different. It's also a reason why it's usually not so high scoring because there's so many fouls being in there as well. Although this time around it was kind of normal. I mean we had only a total of 24 fouls in the entire match. As I said it was super intense. Both teams high pressing and really trying to get the opponent interrupt their play as soon as possible. Actually the first chance probably fell to Colombia but the better chances early on fell to Uruguay especially Darwin Nunez had two shots where you know if you take them better and place them a little bit better you might as well go into the lead. How it was then Colombia who took the lead? James Rodriguez corner and can we just talk about the renaissance for James Rodriguez at this Copa America? He probably should only play in South America or maybe non-European leagues because you know he's not gonna run. But for Copa America he's an absolute star there because he can use all his, uh, his potential and he doesn't need to do much else as well. And corner kick and Jefferson Lerma heads it in in the 39th minute. And Colombia take the lead, but also swiftly go down a man again. Rough tackle, and then Munoz elbows a Uruguayan, gets only a yellow card for it, but it's his second yellow card. To be honest, that elbow is a red card in itself, but that's also South America. Well, you know, this is just a normal foul in a way that we need to admonish a little bit, but it's not worthy of a longer suspension in a way. Really, really rough stuff. And then Uruguay play an entire half, a man more. And this is where you have to look at it as chance missed. They barely create anything because Colombia now felt kind of comfortable defending. And yes, Uruguay brought on the Arasqueta and then later on even Luis Suarez, who actually had probably the best chance for Uruguay to equalize by hitting the post. But there was not that much. In the end, it was actually Colombia that missed the 2-0 with two really open shots. One even being deflected by the goalkeeper onto the crossbar. But it is Colombia that go through to the final. And then we need to talk about the ugly scenes that happened afterwards. And this only transpired, you know, for me yesterday in the morning, I kind of saw pictures, but it didn't really quite compute it. And I said, I want to really hear the fallout from that one. Darwin Nunez and Jimenez went into the stands to fight with Colombian fans. And initially you think this is an absolute no-go. You cannot have this happen. However, when you hear a little bit more of what actually had transpired, at least what Jimenez is saying, that the family was there in the stands behind the goal and they were harassed by drunk Colombia fans. I understand a little bit more. They felt for the safety of their families. They went in there, they defended them. They did it in a physical fashion. They probably will be banned for that. That's not pretty. However, they also said there was no security there. Not good. It came way too late. And in addition, why is there mixed fans? That's for me the biggest question there. You know, in most tournaments we segregate. I mean, at the Euros it's getting better now. I mean, you have your blocks with, let's take the semi-final between Holland and England. We had a, a block of Dutch fans, we had a block of English fans. They each had their sides, but then there was also a whole lot of mixture in there as well. But when you look at the stands, yes, there were a whole lot of Colombia fans because they are just more. But then there's also mixed with Uruguay fans and I'm fine with the idea that yes we should get along but you know in such highly charged matches tempers flare quite easily but for me the bigger question is why is the family sitting behind the goal among the normal fans why what's that organization what is that organization and add to that this is an nfl stadium they're not used to these intense emotions. And I've been in America, I've been in that very stadium a few times. I like my Carolina Panthers, let's put it that way. But they're not used, you know, they're a little bit too uh, uh, harassing here, here and there. But beyond verbal, it barely goes. But not for a very intense soccer crowd. I am sorry to say. You completely underestimated that. So, A, fan segregation. Why is the family there? And I heard the call for, you know, we have those nice suits, but I guess money, money, money. We want to sell the suit. We are not reserving this suit for the players. Maybe the players have to upfront this. Or at least put them in a nicer section with all the families on the main stand. This is something I do not understand. But I also can see that the United States and Comet Ball did not work well together. Because... 
I'm pretty sure that if this was played, let's say in Argentina or any other South American country, it would maybe not be as lucrative, but there would be at least basic precautions to separate the fans. This doesn't bode well for the World Cup, although I'm sure that FIFA will take much better precautions there. Then Comeball, I feel it is a miscommunication between the United States as an organizer and Comeball as the organizing body. Also uh, here that, you know, every city is basically organizing for themselves. You know, the ticket sales are organized just by the owners of the stadium. There's no central organization, which also does not work. This is, I think, where FIFA will do it better. Ugly scenes, I think this will result into suspensions. I honestly think the suspension should be minimal. These are extenuating circumstances where just the humanity feed you would understand. If you fear for your family, I mean, you're gonna go in and after a match where your emotions are at a top level, there's no easy way to calm down. And then you see that, I mean, you're going wacko. You're going wacko. And I absolutely can see Darwin Nunez being upset with the entire situation. Totally can see that. So yeah. Those were my few cents on those ugly scenes. Let's see what this will result in. We have now a final to look forward. As I said, Argentina against Colombia. I think it's a great final overall. I hope it will stay all civilized. I think it will be, especially after these scenes, they will make sure that everything will work fine. In this final, of course, Argentina have to be considered the favorites. Although the way that Colombia have been playing as, as of late, I think this is a way more level final than we would have said ahead of the Copa America. Colombia are red hot. Please let me know what you thought about the semifinals, your thoughts on the ugly scenes in Charlotte. It's really tough for me to say that this was happening in Charlotte because, you know, I've lived in the Carolinas. I like the Carolinas. So any bad press, I really don't like for them. But yeah, one gotta report. Did not sit well with me. In any case, please give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.